Gurudev, if you want to make the introduction. Gaurwani. <laughs> we have to only follow Gaurwani. Jai Ho. Radhe, yes. Radhe. Don't choke with me like that. Yes, yes. This is Gaurwani. <laughs> Yes, we have to follow the real Gora Vani. That's true. Yes, I know. That's the point. That's the point. So, if you allow, Gurudev, we will read today from the book The Saints of Bengalen. Wow. Very good. Wow. I choose one uh, chapter, it's 11, chapter 11, and it's telling a, the story about Sri Govinda Das Babaji. Unfortunately, not Sri Radha Govinda Das Babaji, but oh. Sri Govinda Das Babaji. Yeah. Yeah, that. Jai Shri Radhe. My loving embraces and obeisances to all the family, the Vaishnavas and Gurudev. Jai Shri Radhe. feet. Jai Ho. Chapter 11. Shri Govinda Das Babaji. Govinda Das Babaji is, oh, I just wanted to say why I choose this actually, because it makes a very, very nice point about our Nittai. And we are still under the moon influence of our Nittai moon, which is actually called in Germany the snow moon, because it's shining so bright, very white, white yeah. shining, snow moon. So we are still in the mood to glorify our Nityananda. You can never Nityananda enough. So Govinda Das Babaji's earlier name was Gauracharan Chakravati. If somebody feels inspired to give some commentary in whenever, then we will just uh, interrupt here the commentary and then go on. So, Gurudev. Jayananda Maharaj is also there. <laughs> Jayananda Maharaj, Kijay. So inspired to say, share, sure to share. This yeah. is the. <laughs> So, he was born in a village near Dalal Bajar in district Nayakali. His parents died at an early age. There was no one to support him. But the people of Dalal Bajar Recording in progress. were impressed by his natural qualities. The people of Dalal Bajar were impressed by his natural qualities of head and heart. They began to look after him. Big, big book, not small. And bring him up as a good Vaishnava. After some time, he set out for pilgrim on food. One day, uh, sorry, on the way, he ate whatever he got in Bhiksha. 
or fasted and slept under the trees. So he went to Puri and from there to the extreme south. While in the south, he was inspired by some invisible power to return to Puri. When he reached Puri, he had the good fortune of seeing Radharaman Charan Das Deva performing Kirtan with his party near Singhadvara. Just to remember you, Radharaman Charandas Deva is seen like another incarnation of Nityananda. So he felt attracted towards him as he never felt attracted towards anyone before. He fell at his feet and surrendered himself to him completely. Radha Raman Baba accepted him as his disciple and gave him mantra. Both were tied by a bond of love forever. Gorakharan could not live without Radharaman even for a second. He served him day and night with his body, mind and soul. By constant service, he so identified himself with him that he could read his mind and know what kind of service he would need and when and started preparing himself and making necessary arrangements for the same even before he asked him to do so. It's reminding us the kinkuris are also like that. Yeah. Once Radharaman Baba Mahashaya asked him to go and take Vesha. Vesha means something like uh, Vaishnava Sanyas. It's written here. From the Mahant of Narayan Kappa, Gorakcharan took Vesha, and so he was given the name Sri Govinda Dasa. Mahantaji asked him to remain with Radharaman and be blessed by rendering loving service to him. Govinda Das thus remained in the service of Sri Radha Raman Charan Das Deva. Radha Raman Baba entrusted him with the service of collecting food cranes for the ashram by Bhiksha. 
She went from door to door and collected bhiksha. But he did not himself take food in the ashram. He lived on whatever stuff was distributed to beggars <laughs> by Kshetra. In the ashram, on special occasions, delicious food of various kinds was prepared and thousands of people, both invited and uninvited, ate to their heart content. But even on such occasions, Govinda Das did not eat in the ashram. He took only a small particle of something out of respect for Prasad. His god brothers in the ashram sometimes made great fun of him. They poured on him kira or sauce. The remnants of the banquet on such occasions and said, You may keep away from Mahabrasat. But how can Mahabrasat keep away from you? It will chase and hug you like this. After pouring the prasad over his body, they licked it as his Mahaprasad. Froliksam Govinda added to the fun by rebuking them for their impertinence in jest. Apart from doing bhiksha for the ashram, Govinda Das used to be in the forefront in every activity of the ashram. He was like Navadvip Das, the chief assistant of Radharaman. Both were his two hands. Both were free and informal in their loving attitude and behavior towards him. One day, Radharaman Maharaj called Navadvip early in the morning and said, Look, both you and Govinda go out for Bhiksha to every nook and corner of Puri and then deliver to me whatever you get in Bhiksha. Both went to every lane and by lane uh, and by lane of Puri for Bhiksha. So every little street. Every day they went out and gave Radharaman whatever they got in Bhiksha on their return to the ashram. One day, as soon as they returned to the ashram, chanting the name, Govinda Das delivered to Radharaman the bag containing Bhiksha, 
along with a volley of abuses. So he's, he's calling his Gurudev bad names in the same time when he gives what he get from Bhikshu. So Radha Raman Baba also looked at him with surprise. The whole ashram stood aghast to hear him. But he made obeisances to Baba and went into the dining room. Baba went to him and said in a soft tone, Govinda, have you gone mad? Why? What has happened? said Govinda. Why did you abuse me while delivering the back of Bhiksha? Abuses? I did not give any abuse. I got abuses in Bhiksha. You had asked me to deliver to you whatever I got in Bhiksha. I gave you the rice and pulses. How could I keep the abuses with me? <laughs> Could I digest them if I did? They could have generated hatred in my heart against the person who gave them. Therefore, I delivered them to you along with the rest of the Bhiksha. Wow. Wow. Everyone laughed. Wow. Well, Avani, maybe you can explain this because I think it's a very uh, interesting point coming up here. It's, it's, it's a very, very deep point, actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can uh, share on this. Yes. So the experts like Jainanda Maharaj, they should give some comments on that. I would like to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gurudev, we are all here to learn from you. Actually, he is received a great mercy from his Gurudev. So, he want to only live in his sarupa not thinking in external consciousness. So this he got with the viksha some harsh word. It's it's also subject of developing false ego and thinking and on that. So this grace giver, he abused him, Govinda Das. So he wants to give because it's too heavy to bring out from her to, to Govinda Das in bodily consciousness. It's very easy to to think on that. So he said, if I will keep, I have to think on that. So why to keep it? Gurudev said to what you, you got it, bring for me. So why I will keep for me? <laughs> I give grain, but I not give this to him, then it will be problem to digest it. <laughs> I will only think on that. My real thinking will divert. So I cannot digest this. So I will give with Viksha because Gurudev said, bring everything to me 
So why not I bring to him and I am done. So he has no any things to keep it. He was not cheater. He brings honest with his Guru Dev is that he is not one to deviate what Guru Dev say and to fix in gold. And Guru Dev Radha uh, Charan Das Bhavaji realized it that he is very good devotee. What comes to me? Many realizations can come. So what you realize, you can also share. So, well, as you said, it shows the, the pure heart of this servant. He understands what is actually also said in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the devotee who is very near to Krishna, he does not make any distinction between good or bad in the outer world because he understands that everything is the same. There is no good or bad, actually, because if you stay in your Swarup, it's just the love which you actually can feel. There is love who shows first a bad face, and then after you went through the situation, you see the mercy in it and understand that you developed your spiritual life more and more. And there's the other side which shows a nice face in the beginning and the bad face in the end. So it's just that it's the other way around, but it's actually the same thing. It just shows the other face first and then the other one, the, the second face in the second time. So what is actually the real difference between these two things? It's love, it's mercy. It's first the bonbon and then it's the, the how you say, uh, Aufgabe. Uh, the challenge. Or it's first the challenge and then the bonbon. But in the end, it's, it's just the mercy. Two sides of mercy. So this pure heart of this servant understood that whatever I get, I will not judge if it's good or bad. I will give it to Gurudev. I don't even mind if it's good or bad. It's just that if I accept something for me, then I will fall into the trap of Maya, because nothing belongs to me, if it's good or bad or whatever it is. So whatever I got, this was actually what my Guru Dev said, I should give him, so I do this. Without thinking myself, Very nice. So somebody maybe wants to share on that point more? Uh, uh, uh. I, I feeling, I feel uh, this disciple Govinda does become instrument, instrument of Gurudev. So he di he did not think I'm a doer. I'm just uh, like a puppet of Guru Dev. He does not have any false ego. This is mine. I'm doing. I'm enjoying. So he's just doing on behalf of Gurudev. So 
our disciple, our disciple <laughs> uh, could learn from Govinda Das. So we may think, you know, I'm doing this one, this seva, that seva, but actually we are doing some seva on behalf of our Guru Dev. Any result coming good or bad, so we don't care. Sometimes we may blame from other people. Sometimes may be glorified by other people, but we don't care. We care for the pleasure of our Guru Dev. <laughs> so this Govindanath become instrument. Guru Dev, this instrument saying he 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 can he can he could do in Swarpa Besha. He knows the heart of Guru Dev. In the heart their union, he knows the heart of Guru Dev. So he does not care anything, does not think, does not judge, does not digest, just to give it to Guru Dev. If we could do this, then we also become, we can realize our Swarupa Besh. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Baba was very happy to hear this. He embraced Govinda heartily and said with a voice choked with emotion, Govinda, I am sold out to you on account of your innocent, artless and loving behavior. Yeah. Baba always encouraged Govinda Sakya Bhav, free and friendly attitude towards him. So that's another interesting point here. Maybe, maybe somebody wants to comment on that also. Baba always encouraged Govinda Sakya Bhav, his free and friendly attitude towards him. I can only remember in Hidden Path of Devotion when uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj was uh, sharing that if we want to really pro progress in uh, Raganuga Bhakti, it is important to develop this Vishrambena Guru Seva, that fearless service. Fearless means, actually, if you give me uh, some sweets or if you give me something salty if you give me some friendly words or if you give me some uh, uh, chastisement you are always my beloved dear guru dev guru manjari and i will i will do whatever you tell me to do and uh, in hidden part of devotion is giving the example that somebody who is more in this respectful Aishwaya mood with their Gurudev, they will sit down on the floor with the folded hands and they will say, oh Gurudev, what do you want me to serve? How can I serve you? And someone who is more in this uh, fearless mood of friendship and, and very close intimate service, they will not be fearful to jump on the bed or on the lap of Gurudev if they need this service. If they need this close uh, service, they will be fearless and they will give massage, they will, they will do everything and they are not in the distance. 
they are very close and they always see Gurudev also as a servant of Srimati Radhika and they will like to serve in this way. Very nice. Thank you. Hmm. Jain on the Maharaj, maybe you? Uh, yes. So, in, in, in Bhaiti Bhakti, always I should have Baba mm -hmm. there. So, here you can be here. There, there are service. So, in in Bhaiti Bhakti, so always there Aishwara Muth, Bowen Devales. But uh, if we attain Raga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti, or say like uh, Buraja Bhakti, and then a disciple becomes very close with Gurudev. Because Say if we think our Swara Pabesh, Gurudev is Guru Manjari. So the difference is very small. In in spiritual spiritual world, we are friends with Gurudev. Very intimate. Of course, of course there is some some something little older one day was or, or something but very close like a rupa manjari and gati manjari so let's see they are very close friend and Cross friend means heart is one. Gurudev and the dear Gurudev and dear disciple, they, the heart should be one. And same feeling. And same purpose for the Sepa of our Swami. So therefore, if we could cross with Gurudev and very cross, cross is served. And if we can get, we can steal his feeling. Then we can become very, very cross with Gurudev. And we can become dear friend, dear friend, dear sister. <laughs> Jai Ho. So, if we see it very uh, simple, um, if you are in a family, then you cannot choose uh, your position. You may be born as the younger uh, sister of another girl in the family and maybe there's not a big difference and you are very close but the elder sister has a little bit more experience right <laughs> so mama is telling the older sister maybe you look to your younger sister and assist a little bit because you're more experienced. So if we just accept this natural position, then because of love, loving connection, we can read the heart of our sister by the time. But if we have fear, we will never read the heart because our heart is closed in fear. 
So therefore, it's necessary to make some experiences also with the friendly mood of our Guru Manjari. If we do not experience that, how can we get this deep faith, how we can ever get the nishta, unshakable? This is only possible if we can feel the heart. I remember one occasion when Gurudev gave me some order in the outside, but inside told me exactly the other way around. I was completely bewildered for some time, but then I understood he could not say outside because other people were there and it wouldn't give a good picture. <laughs> but inside I could feel what he really told me. And then it really happened like that. So it was proved that it was not a mental concoction of mine. So later on it was proved, yes, you understood. In the heart, he told you exactly the other side, which he was speaking in his sadaka. So we have to come to this position because then Nishta, Guru Nishta, is growing and Nishta has to grow. It will be not fall from the sky. It is mercy, yes. So in one way it comes, but in form of occasions, some tests, some situations. And when we go through that situation, which is mercy, then we understand more that why we had fear, everything went out very, very nicely. So in this way, Nishta is growing. So a friendly attitude is definitely uh, necessary. It's not, it's really necessary for the way of Raga. Because Raga means, I have a relationship, a lovely relationship. How can I open my heart if there is not a lovely relationship? And Raga Bhakti means Bhava. It's the way of Bhava. So how I can open my heart and feel, feel if I will get hurt? We all know this experience in the material world that we close if somebody is hurting us. So the way is a deep relationship and making the experience and in this way we will go into Nishta, unshakable. And this is actually what Gurudev also told me in that time when he gave me this twisted instruction. He told me, you will be unshakable soon. <laughs> Later I understood why he said that. <coughs> Goravani? Yes. Goravani? I'm sorry, I um can I just say, uh, ask Gurudev a question? Of course. Because you just triggered something about Guru Nishta, which is a very fundamental part of our path. And today, in, after RT, we were sitting with Gurudev in the sun, and Gurudev kind of astonished us with a... Because I was thinking... First Guru Nishta, then Ishta Nishta, then Swarup Nishta. But Guru they said no. First Swarup Nishta, then real Guru Nishta can come. <laughs> so I'm pondering on this since lunchtime. <laughs> I want to ask Guru if, like, uh, 
how to, how to understand this? Because I thought first, Guru Nishta. Actually, Guru say Nishta, but is faith on me. Mm. We say that I have a Guru Nishta, but is a faith because nothing is surprising to me. When I little practice about the so there is a diksha and siksha, two things, right? Diksha is our diksha mantra. Kama Gayatri and Bija Mantra and Gaura Mantra, Radha Mantra, these are the combination of that. But Diksha, then Siksha. And what is Siksha? Sarup Siksha is the Siksha. Before was Siksha, external Siksha. But the Sarup Siksha when come, then is a whole thing happen. When we are ready for the Sarup Siksha, uh, siksha Diksha and Siksha. And Siksha is how to practice in our Siddha Deha, in our constitutional position, as per the key of that. And when we start practicing this, then every moment surprise happening. Then real Nistha is coming. Sadha, you see, first thing is Sadha. Sadhu Sangha, Bhajan Kriya, Anartha Nivrti, and Nistha. Anartha Nivrti can come only when Siksha is adopted and following the right way. And what is the key? What I got from my Gurudev that practice of Sarupavish. Only by practicing it first, my siksha will be completed. Then we start researching in this world. We start searching and living in this world, and it will reveal it. And then, what is Nista after what is happening? Suniti, what Ruchi. happened? Ruchi, Ruchi Guru. Test will come. Ruchi will test. And this test is surprising, so tasteful. It becomes tasteful because of all surprising. Then, Nista is there. Nista is the last step of that. If not, we say I have a Nista, Nista, but originally we have a Sadha. Mm. <laughs> Nista comes after this. If the Siksha starts working in our life, Diksha and Siksha. Uh, without Siksha, Diksha is also not come. It's a combination of Diksha and Siksha. Diksha plus Siksha, teaching for my Siddha Deha, constitutional position. You see, Prabhupada books, Bhagavad Gita, is mentioning in page 4 this. Pradhi. So, if I understood right, I just want to 
bring it a little bit more uh, to to a point for my mind here. Um, when I don't get diksha and don't practice, I cannot realize myself. And if I don't realize myself, I cannot get the shiksha of the guru manjari. Because if I'm not in my form, I cannot understand guru manjari. No connection. It's not, it's not necessary that diksha guru is giving shiksha to us. Is a chance, is a good luck that Diksha Guru and Siksha Guru is one. But it can be possible that I took Diksha from someone and I got Siksha from someone. But, but I have from Sukriti, when Diksha and Siksha is happening from one word, one place, and we realize it. Without realization, mantra is also not prevailing. What about the, this uh, name and uh, color importance, age importance, seva importance, how it will reveal? So there's more. always they say to practice the mantra that it will reveal you after some time. You will realize it. Mantra will give you automatic himself explanation. Explain. If I not do, not happening. And when I got that, and I keep it, but I know practice is also not happening. Siksha. In practical, we have to practice it. And slowly, we don't need to bother for that. When it's coming, then automatically you, you, what you say, Ruchi means taste will come. Automatic, it will more and more happen. You know, I've fought for that because tasteful. If there is no test, we, we have to do pressure for that. And if we have a test, we have no pressure for doing that. It's not surprising. <laughs> what I have to press myself to do that, it'll become so radishing that I don't want to leave it. This is surprising. Many surprises will happen. In one day, how many waves will come of surprise, you don't know. <laughs> Jai Shri Radha. So once Baba Mahashaya <coughs> had, had gone to Kentrapada near Kutak with Govinda and others. Babaji Mahashaya was staying in the office of Shyam Sundara Babu while his followers were staying in his house. One morning he was looking very grave. At about seven o'clock he wrote a letter to Govinda Dada and sent it to him through a boy. The letter was as follows. 
Dear Govinda, as soon as you receive this letter, go on food to Brindavan, live in Radhakund on Madhukari, and sweep Radhakund every day. No more meeting with me at present. We shall meet later at some other place as Nitai Chant has willed. Vaishnavadas Anudas Radharaman Charandas. The letter came to Govinda Dada and others as a thunderbolt. Everyone said, How and for what reason? Babaji Mahashaya, who is ever so kind, has suddenly become so hard. After a little while, however, Govinda Dada said slowly and coolly to the boy who had brought the letter, I shall comply. Let me be happy. Convey my dandavat to him. The boy returned and conveyed this to Baba Mahashaya. He remained quiet and grave as before. His attendant disciples also did not have the courage to speak to him. After a short while came Nitya Swarup Brahmachari. He said, If you kindly permit, I may also go to Brindavan with Govinda Dada. Babaji, you can certainly go. I have no objection. Nitya Swarup, if Govinda Dada comes and performs Dandavat to you before leaving, Babaji, no. Mind your own business, let alone others. Nitya Swarup could not say anything further. He went back with tears in his eyes and told Govinda Dada everything. Then came two other disciples. Shyamananda Das and Nitai Das and they asked for permission to go with Govinda Dada. Baba Mahashaya permitted them as well. Shyam Sundara Babu and others were standing before Baba Mahashaya and watching everything like wooden dolls without saying anything. Govinda Dada, Nitya Swarup Brahmachari, Shyamanada Das, 
what Nittai does, could wait no longer. They started for Vrindavan while singing Bhajani Taigo Radhi Shyam Chappa Hare Krishna Hare Ram Tears were constantly flowing from their eyes. Those who saw them going were also weeping. The whole atmosphere was charged with lamentation. Only Babaji Mahashaya was sitting calm and quiet, like one totally undisturbed and unconcerned. At this time, Shamsundara Babu came, <coughs> deeply aggrieved and agitated. He lay prostrate before Baba Mahashaya and said, in a voice trembling with fear, I have a request. I want to give the four persons going to Brindavan some money for the journey. You should not object. What objection can I have, said Babu Mahashaya. If they accept, you can give. Shamsundara Babu went and said to Govinda Dada, Govinda Dada, I have brought some money for the journey. Please accept. I have asked Baba Mahashaya also. He has no objection. Govinda Dada said, Oh, I see. My examination is not yet over. And he quickened in pace towards Vrindavan. Shamsundara Babu returned disappointed. He told Baba Mahashaya, that Govinda Dada refused to accept anything. Baba Mahashaya was pleased to hear this. There was now a change in him. With tears in his eyes he asked, Has Govinda really gone? Yes, said Shyama Sundara. <coughs> you sent him. I can still send someone to get him back if you want. No, no. Don't do that. They are going to Brindavan. You must not obstruct, replied Baba Mahashaya. He was again in tears as he said this. Lalita Dasi had so far been looking for the right moment to say what she felt she must. She now came forward and said, We never knew that you could be so hard-hearted you did not even allow Govinda Dada to come and make Dandavat to you before leaving. Now why you shed crocodile tears? Babaji answered, 
you people do not know. Good times are ahead for Govinda. By the grace of Nitai Chand, he is going to Vrindavan and he will make good progress. Nitai Chand is never hard on anyone. I think this is another point who maybe some feelings could be shared. Actually, Baba wants to sambaran. He wants to leave his body. So he wants to send his nearest and dearest associate, associate father softly. That he wants to go in soon to leave this body. So it's happening. Larita Didi is always very close to Baba. He's a male, but he is dressed like a Lalita. So you see, I say, why are you crying now for them? You once a time said, why is crying? Because he loves them. But they, he knows that if they will stay, they cannot tolerate my separation. So they sent him out. This is Mahajan's. My Gurudev, when he wants to leave, he sent me to Mughal. And when I am going, he said to me that I will not leave you. I will be always with you. I don't understand why he said to me. I will be always with you. I will not leave you. Because he want to sambaran his past and he want to go to Goloka. So he sent me Mughal, go and do this service important for you. And in between that, in 10 days, he left his body. He went to go over. Sorry, Sister Devi. It, it reminds me of Saduma deeply. And she has gone and I have to go on. I'm, I have the duty to go on. You see. So, this is the sometimes it has to be so, so hard. Love <laughs> going on. Love makes you. This is the truth. When he will be part, he will do more in my separation. So he sent for Vrindavan. And it, I will care to him. He has also Nitai Shakti, but now he's sending it far from himself. Go on, you will see that. <laughs> <laughs> Lalita says, We, the Jeevas of Kali, are too weak and imbecile. How can we, in moments of adversity, reconcile ourselves with it? under the belief that it would be the harbinger of happiness. 
So how we could have the faith that it will be in the end everything nicely? Babaji. When Nitai Chand wants to shower his mercy upon anyone, he has also to, pre to prepare him for it. Yeah, you see, he's preparing. Preparing. Mahajan prepare us for that. Because they know what is going to happen. He is not ignorant like you. He is omniscient. He knows your weakness and shortcomings. He also knows how to remove them and does whatever is necessary towards that end. Lalita. Maybe. Still, I would like to know for what fault of his you gave Govinda this punishment. <laughs> Babaji, do you think that going to Brindavan <laughs> <laughs> Living in Radakund a punishment? There are many Mahatmas who covet that kind of punishment. <laughs> Govinda Das reached Vrindavan after seeing the Thakurs of Brindavan and doing the Parikram of Govardhan, he went to Radhakund. He lived there for six years and regularly did the service of sweeping around the Kunda. He did not go anywhere even for a single day. If ever he went to Brindavan, he returned the same day, so that his service of Radakund was not neglected. During this period, he made much progress and the spiritual wealth he attained made him often shed tears in remembrance of the causeless mercy of Baba Mahashaya. In another story, actually, it is also said that he actually realized his Swarup there and he act actually Darshan from Radharani and Krishna there. In that form he served. So after six years, when Baba Mahashaya went to Vrindavan, he asked Govinda to go to Nilachal. From Nilachal, he went to Navadvip with Baba Mahashaya. But Baba Mahashaya suddenly disappeared. He could not bear his separation 
life became difficult for him. Then, one day, Babaji Mahashaya appeared to him in a dream and asked him to go to Puri and look after the Haridas Thakurmat. At that time, the condition of the Mat was so deplorable that it was about to be sold to a Christian priest. Govinda does serve the Mat with all his heart and soul for 22 years. Then he went to Navadvip in 1930. He left his body to meet Sri Radharaman Charan Das Deva in celestial Vrindavan. Here ends the story. Actually, I love this book very much because it makes always in every story such wonderful points. And to remember a point, it is always necessary that feelings are, uh, how do you say, um, gerührt? <laughs> But hmm? moved hmm? or feelings to, yeah churned so feelings have to come up they have to be churned then your attention is there and then comes the point and then the point will stick in the heart because the feelings actually are the the trans firm uh, they 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 how you say they're actually putting the information in the heart so and these stories are very wonderful and they are making so wonderful points So you are invited to share your feelings and thoughts about this. Or if someone has a question. Radha, Radha, можно a little question? Я тебя хорошо вижу, да, может. Гурудев. Вопрос Гурудева такой что вот он рассказал да, о том о Радхе Гавинге, своем гуру Махараджи. И мне вот интересно, ну, чисто по-человечески, да, по-человечески, ну, как он вообще пережил этот момент? Ну, что мы, мы все теряем, да, все, у всех есть этот опыт горький. Ну, и как вот, ну, какую-то, может быть, формулу или мантру какую-то, что, ну, как, как вообще это? Если мы, чем больше мы погружаемся, да, становимся тонкими чувственными, ну то есть это же как бы чем дальше это будет более, все более невыносимо. И ну вот как из его личного опыта, баба, было, плюс. Рады, рады. Vaishnava, who is going to Nitya his guru or Shiksha guru. What is your experience? Uh, he's asking maybe some mantra, because when devotees um, practicing gradually, heart becomes more soft, more subtle, and the pain become more strong. I say my case, when I listen that my guru, they believe I believe it. <laughs> 
because he himself said to me, I will not leave you. So I never believed that he leave me. He is always with me and I'm connected with him and I'm not talking all he is doing for me. So he is always with me. He never leave me. I believe the word of his Vani. Vani is bigger or Bapu is bigger. His Vani is bigger. He said that I am with you. I will be with you. He is with me. I say, when I give class, I never glorify him because to whom glorify? He will talk to me. Why I will glorify him? He is always with me. He is not far from me. I never, minute I feel that he is far. Honestly, I speak. I am his instrument and I do the thing what he said to me. I have no tears when I listen this. Honestly, I say, I I not come to his, uh, the, what you said, this program, what happened. I say, he's not gone. Why I will believe it? I not believe it. <laughs> Honest. He cannot leave us. If he leave, how is my uh, what is my existence? If he goes far, there is no existence of him. So he said, I will be always with you, and I believe his words will never lie. What he said to me it happens to me. One day he called me, I want to do bhajan. He said to me, you will travel the whole world. <laughs> I, I start crying one week. I want to do bhajan living in Vrindavan. He said to travel the whole world. I was crying. Then my god brother said, he is not... What you say to him is very much in pain. Then he called me and he said to me, Okay, after this you will stay some days in, in Vrindavan. You will not go out from temple even. <laughs> <laughs> then he will become mad, pagal. <laughs> And you will cry only, and you will live in Vrindavan. He sent me to Prabhupada. You can imagine, I was so fanatic with him. He said, go, Nitai is there. Nitai's expansion is Prabhupada. Go and take blessing from him. See, my Mula Prakriti, Friends of Prabhupada books, my inter interview is there. I don't know, there is no book left here. His book is the book in the Narayan Maharaj place, one has the many books. Mula Prakriti. Mula Prakriti. So, he's all his mercy. Why this work will be not right? This is right for me.
everything is right and it's also right. You not live. That has to believe. And I listen what he said and I do what he said to me. And when I look in his world, I do like him magic. Nothing can stop me after that. And when he knows, say, I listening, listening, but I not do. Clearly, I say, I listen, then I do. His instruction, then I follow. This is my connection with him. He is my navigator. He is my navigator. He is my navigator. Thank you, Baba. Rade, Rade. Thank you. Aarti Rade, 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 Rade,